Hello friends and welcome back and today we shall be discussing about uh, dealing with missing values in Python and we, I'll walk you through the process of uh, the introduction and various ways how we, how we deal with these missing values, especially in Python. There's a little mention of R also, but let's see how, how, how does things uh, roll out. So in the introduction, we have like missing values and how do they really impact your data set when you're working with it. So um, you know that we have sufficiently dealt with missing values in the previous videos that they make your data analysis biased. And you cannot rely on that data on those results and interpretations because of the missing values. And we have also seen three categories of missing values, MCAR, MAR, and MNAR. I will provide the link. Please go ahead and see what are these missing values and their types. So now we come to how to deal with these missing values. This is a follow-up of that video. Now, there are three types of uh, missing values which we come across while we are doing or exploring our data set. It says either null, NAN, or NA. So we come across this NAN most frequently in our data set. This NAN refers to not an integer or not a number. And we see it when we are doing our Python, um, or we are using Python especially. So Python has these three types of missing values, as you can see here. And um, how do we detect these null values in Python? It's through two, two methods which have been mentioned in Pandas Python that you either use is any or not null. Both these methods re return a Boolean expression. Now, is any means it returns yes if your values are having missing numbers, okay, or missing values. And not null means it will give you a non integer, non integer values. So it will return again a Boolean expression, true or false, depending on whether the value is null or not. So if you're not having a null value, it will return false. It will return true, false. Now I will come on to how to deal with these missing values. So the first and the foremost way is dropping them and just get rid of it. So this is the first thing that we do in our data set. But there are various negative points with this also that you might lose crucial information if you are dropping a lot of data. Now first let us see how do you drop these data. You drop the null values, but there is also a distinction between what you are dropping. Either you are dropping the rows or you are dropping the columns or you are dropping specific values in your data which you which you want. So there are various methods again in Pandas which or Python which we use for this. So you drop any, drop dot any method is being used for dropping these values and this will drop all the values in your rows, okay? And when you use this drop dot any, x is equals to one, this will drop all the values on your columns. But now provided now, if I want certain specific values to be dropped, I will use two methods or functions like how or thresh function, right? So you can specify how do you want to drop the columns. Either you want to drop is equals to all, so all the null values will be dropped. Or if you can specify some different parameter for that, it is just a go ahead for that. Now, uh, this thresh means it is a threshold and if you specify something like thresh is equals to three, though all the values which are not having this threshold will be dropped. Okay, makes sense. So now we come on to another way of dealing with these null values, and that is filling these null values, right? So how do you do? How do you again deal with this null value? Is you fill these null values either with a value or with some another parameter you want, like some other value you want to give some number or something, depending on your data set. Now, the method which we use is like your data set dot fill any method and you replace the null values with this. There's another thing which I want to mention here that you can fill these null values either with forward fill or backward fill. Now, these forward and backward fill I'm not coming covering up here uh, because uh, I have uh, dealt with all these filling with the, or dealing with these null values, filling these data, everything in my course on Udemy. I'll provide the link. Uh, please go ahead and see if it really. Uh, is useful enroll in the course it will help all of us like you and me right so fill backward and fill forward how do you apply it in your data set is being explained using projects so you can see how these filling null values replacing the values dropping the null values and various other ways how do you impute those values so now we are coming on to imputation which is another way of dealing the missing values in python now this imputation is uh, means Either is a single imputation or multivariate imputation. Now, 
single is quite easy because here you are replacing the values either with mean, median, or mode. Now, mean, median is used for numeric data, and mode is used for the categorical data because uh, categorical data that means it is highest frequency occurrence of uh, suppose gender. Most of the uh, data set has females in your data set, so you can just replace the null values with females. Like it depends on the uh, frequency of occurrence. So, like mode, you are replacing the categorical variables with that. And mean is um, used. Mean and median is used for your numeric data set. So you can replace the values, missing values with this. But again, it is just an assumption or a way of um, making our data um, ready for feeding it into the algorithm and later on training. So we are applying all these ways like fixing Jugar type. Okay. So this is for univariate feature imputation. Now I'll come walk you through multivariate feature imputation. Now this is a little sophisticated or a little complex approach which we use in Python. And what happens here is it iterates in a round robin fashion. And uh, now if I just read this line, it says that this models each each feature which with the missing value of I would say um, just to say that as a function of other feature. So this is, this is I, I want to explain this line actually that uh, what does this really mean? And then it just use that estimate for imputation. Now suppose uh, you just go through this line. I, 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 I will explain you, but what does this mean? Um, now suppose I, uh, I, I fit a regressor with X and Y. X is your independent and Y is your output or the dependent variable and this y is having the missing values okay so what i do is i fit this regressor and this regressor will predict the missing values of y so what it is doing it is mapping a function so it is mapping this x with the you know to predict this missing values of y and this happens for each column which is having these null values so this is using it iteratively and this happens until we until the maximum iteration has been completed and what the result we get is the result of the final imputation round. So this is how this multivariate uh, imputation works by the, the round robin, generally in round robin fashion, iteration and predicting the y again and again for the columns which are missing the values. Okay. So this is this is what it meant, just to simplify things. And this was uh, multivariate imputation. Now there is one more thing which I want to show you and which I want to tell you actually that um, we dealt with this um, um, introduction i told you that uh, we fill this null values now in r there's a difference that this has an inbuilt distinction between null values and missing values so you don't have to apply your brains as in python you keep guessing whether this null value is because of some missing value some missing data or it is like a null value but in r it is not a problem and so you are being saved. So there are ways how you can deal with these null values or missing values in R. So this has a leverage over Python when you are dealing with missing values in R. Uh, though I'm not, I've not worked with R so much, but if you want uh, certain videos for that, for theory or practical, I can come up with it. Let's let's give it a shot and comment in the description box if you if you would like to work with more with dealing with you know null values in Python or in R. So we can work out things together and uh, next next uh, video it will be a series of project and of uh, seaborn wherein i will be telling you how to do data exploration the second would be dealing with these null values and uh, the third one would be model building so the second part would be a logical follow-up of this video so stay tuned for that video it, will, it might take a two or three days or so and i'll be back with those videos so thank you for watching